Hi, this is Seher from Easy Peasy, and the topic we are going to discuss today is called as Discovery of the Cell and Cell Theory. Now, as we know of today, the cell is the basic structural and functional unit of every living organism. So we should know a little bit about the discovery of the cell. And to our concern, cell was discovered between the year of 1600 to 1700. This story started with the discovery of compound microscope by Dutch spectacle maker called as Zacharias Jensen in 1608. Now when the compound microscope was discovered, it was a hot item for every scientist because they want to see different type of things by using this microscope. Now, there is another Dutch scientist called as Anthony von Leeuwenhoek discovered his own microscope in the late 1600. Now, Leeuwenhoek was not actually the scientist at that time because he never went to the school and he doesn't know any other language other than the Dutch language. He made this microscope by using the glass pearl that was commonly used at that time in the textile shop to see the quality of the cloth and he was working in the textile shop. His microscope was capable of magnifying objects by a factor of about 200 to 300. And apparently he discovered this compound microscope to see the good quality of clothes. And he never revealed his secret that how he made this microscope in order to avoid the competition. Let's pause the story of Lee Van Hock right here. Now, in the same era, another British scientist named as Robert Hooke discovered his own microscope. And that microscope can magnify by a factor of 40 to 50. Again, this scientist was not a biologist. He was more interested in physics by discovering Hooke's law and balance spring. But what he does that he discovered this compound microscope and then he used this microscope in order to see almost literally everything that he could under that microscope. After taking observations of all the different things that he saw under his microscope, he wrote a book called as Micrographia of Minute Bodies. Now this book was a hot sell at that time, not because of the latest information they had in that time, but also because of these folded pictures that were present in his book. These pictures are showing all the minute details of all the organisms he watched under his compound microscope. That includes flea, gray drone fly head, blue fly, bee sting, gnat insect, ant, crystal of frozen urine and the slice of a cork. When he watched the slice of the cork under his compound microscope, he saw these minute honeycomb-like structures which he named as cell. So that's how the cells were discovered. Now back to Anthony Van Lee Van Hock. He saw that book. Now he can't read it because he doesn't know English, but he literally can see the pictures that were present there and he got really impressed. So he started making observations what he saw under his own microscope and then he started writing letters to the Royal Society of London. This is one of the original letters he wrote to the Royal Society as you can see the signature here. Now this letter was in Dutch language so it was translated and then republished into the physiological transactions. The first observation he made was in 1674 of a pond water and then he made a diagram like this in his letter which is showing the rotifers hydra and vorticilla. Now we know these organisms as protists. He also replicated some of the Robert Hooke's work like bee sting. And in 1674 he also discovered the shape and size of the red blood cells. Then in 1676 he took the plaque of his own teeth and tried to see what's inside it. And then he saw some minute creatures moving inside his microscope. And he estimated that it would take more than 10,000 of them to fill the volume of a small grain of sand. And he called them living animalcules because they were moving like animals. This is the original picture that he drew and then sent the letter to Royal Society. And that's how the bacteria were discovered. 
Many members of the Royal Society refused to believe in the existence of Lee Won Hock's microscopic creatures. It took until 1677 before their existence was fully accepted. So, by these two scientists, Robert Hooke and Lee Won Hock, the microbiology was originated. Okay, next part of the story. In 1838, another German botanist, Matthias Jakob Schleiden, was working on different type of plants. And then he deducted a conclusion that all plants are made up of cells. Then he wrote this thing in Beitrager Phytogenesis in 1838. The very next year, another German zoologist called as Theodor Schwann was working on different type of animals. And then he deducted the same conclusion that all animals are made up of cells. Then in 1855, a Third, a German physiologist, Rudolf Virchow, recognized the cell is dividing under his microscope. So he detected the cells are dividing from the pre-existing cells under his microscope. Now, with the work of these three German scientists, we got the cell theory. And the cell theory have three clauses. The first clause was that all organisms are made up of one or more cells. Second clause was the cells are the smallest working unit of all living organisms and cells come from pre-existing cells. So these three German scientists laid the foundation of cell biology. Then in 1931, Max Noll and Ernst Ruska invented electron microscope. In electron microscope, the sunlight is replaced by electrons to visualize the smallest substance. And this finally gave us the opportunity to see what is present inside a cell. And then we have animal cell, plant cell, and bacterial cell or unicellular organisms. Besides all these diversities that are present in our world, that includes animal, plants, bacteria, fishes, even insects, and unicellular organisms, there are four things that are common in each type of cell. That includes plasma membrane or cell membrane, cytoplasm, ribosomes, and DNA. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe our channel and support our channel on this website. Thank you. Bye-bye.